Hi everyone and welcome to this introductory section um, to the um, Middle East Architecture Lab Live Academy. This will be a tutorial led by me, uh, Nicholas Turki, and we'll be focusing on Autodesk Maya and advanced um, polygon modeling in, in, in particular and rendering with Arnold. So um, I will just start this brief introduction to, to the webinar. Uh, with a couple of logistics, what we're going to talk about and who am I also, uh, just to give you um, sort of like a, a bit of um, uh, framework of what I've been doing so far and what, uh, what you can expect from this webinar as well. Um, so this will be a uh, four hours uh, session. Uh, so we will have, we will get the time both to um, uh, get questions from you guys. So it will be a live session. Uh, we'll, we'll go through uh, specific topics that I'm going to um, go briefly on in, in a bit. And then we will have also this time to kind of discuss or if you guys have other questions and you want to dive a bit uh, deeper into a specific topic. Um, so yeah, let's, let's say just so just to present myself a couple of words about me. Uh, as I said, my name is Nicolas Turki and I'm currently working in London at Zaha Hadid Architects. Um, so I've uh, been based in London for about two years now. And before that, I, um, I graduated from the Harvard Graduate School of Design uh, MR2 program. And I got my bachelor degree and my master in architecture one, either before than that from University of Bologna in Italy, where I'm also currently teaching a computational um, design course. Um, I worked in several firms before landing to Zaha Hadid Architects, um, some of them in Italy, other uh, based worldwide, like uh, uh, Peter Eisman Architects in New York uh, or um, uh, Hernan Diaz Alonso Architects in, in Los Angeles. Um, and then um, so far, my career in the architectural field has been kind of always uh, focus or align towards uh, parametric design in a way, uh, but but just in general, computational tools has always played a very important role uh, within my design workflow, where I try to both to pair a theoretical uh, theoretical approach with this more um, computational and, and hands-on uh, methodology. Um, so yeah, you see some some of the projects I've been working on, and um, I think. That's it for the presentation regarding myself. I don't want to spend too much time on this because I, I guess you guys are more interested in what we, what we actually going to talk about during the, the tutorial. So um, the tutorial will be um, totally focused on Autodesk Maya. And then I decided to pair this with uh, uh, this, the new rendering engine that Maya is deploying, which is uh, Arnold Render. Um, in, in, other, in other tutorials, I was pairing Autodesk Maya with a um, sort of like an, another software for rendering, but I decided this time just to have this kind of photo introduction and then getting the, whatever the organic shapes that we're gonna develop and the parametric control model to get them render inside Maya. So without any need of exporting geometry um, in, in other software. Um, during the, um, during the, the webinar itself, I will, try and cover also how all the sort of like the exporting, importing issue in Maya, which is very relevant. Uh, but I would say that the, the workflow that we will try to build will, will give you, um, so will give you an overall understanding of how Autodesk Maya works, specifically using a um, polygonal um, manipulation. And then we will get that through a uh, final rendering so still in Maya. So it will also give you an understanding of how the rendering um, session works in Maya. Um, just a few, yeah, few topics that we'll, we will be covering. I just introduced it here briefly. Um, so it is important to say that this is a course meant to be for beginners, uh, but that doesn't mean that um, we won't speed up at some point. So I can already tell you that if you have zero experience with Maya, that's totally fine and very welcomed. And I will cover 
the, an introduction to the user interface. I will probably start now. Um, and then, so it's fine for those of you who never opened the software before. But at the same time, if you guys really want to get the most out of that, I would suggest you anyway, just to, you know, start to familiarize since there is a bit of time before this webinar, which is on the 17th of June, you will have some time to familiarize yourself with the, with the tools. Um, and then you will get the most out of uh, this workflow. Um, this workflow is very much, um, I would say, it, it is kind of it's, it's, it's practice oriented in a way, um, because this is also the workflow that we are using at Zaha Hadid Architects. And then, of course, I'm introducing also part of my research as a, uh, as a researcher in the academic environment. Um, and I think that's kind of the, the value of this, this webinar is the possibility to me to kind of pair these two aspects, right? So to show you the workflow that you will normally use in the office, perhaps, uh, to generate organic shapes or parametrically controlled um, models. But at the same time, there is a bit also of research or kind of like tangential themes or thematics that I would like to introduce as well. So as I mentioned before, we will be covering the Maya user interface. Um, I'll show you how to set up, properly set up a project, how to customize uh, your Maya interface and tools and having um, customized buttons and shelves. And then we will move from very basic uh, polygonal modeling to kind of advanced stage of it. So that, that will be, I think, key to the workshop. And then the, we will be um, focusing a bit on panelization as well. Uh, panelization via, um, I would say that here we can go through, um, maybe I'll show you some images, but we can go through a um, couple of uh, different methods to cover this topic. And then um, uh, introducing some animation as well, which in Maya can be used to uh, develop shapes as well for so for form finding. And then of course, I'll, I'll kind of, you, you will get at the end an idea of, of why Maya is considered a um, parametric um, design tool as well. Um, yeah, some end dynamics, and then finally we will get into Arnold as well. So um, yeah, as I said, there will be a brief introduction. I will start um, straight away after this short presentation to give you an introduction to the user interface, which could be um, could look a bit overwhelming at the beginning, but I think. Uh, uh, within this webinar, like by the end of this webinar, you guys will be familiar with the uh, with interface and able to uh, move freely uh, within it. Uh, and then one of the most used um, workflow in Maya is actually starting with the primitive. So um, this is very much used in the offices as well, where we start with very low poly. So we get to the basic, um, uh, to the most primitive shapes and then we start to add subdivisions and manipulate them in order to create something more complex. And, and the important thing in Maya, I think is very easy to lose the control over the geometry, uh, especially as you get more and more complex with it, but I'll show you uh, some tricks to keep this under control. And then we will be starting a, um, some, again, like you can see some very low poly geometries, uh, but then uh, they're kind of uh, covering um, uh, uh, good potentialities for further development and, and panelization or some organic modeling inspired by uh, certain, certain um, architecture offices that you might be familiar with. And then, as I said before, some panelization that could be either uh, could either be obtained by um, um, like morphing topology or um, procedural design. Um, yeah, these are some of the examples. So uh, they will be, we will be covering a portion, which I believe very important for architects uh, using Maya, which is um, about a sort of, sort of like blending uh, and manipulating morphologies, especially in relation to uh, facades, tessellations, or um, even like master plan uh, form finding and so on. And then, and then eventually we will study some uh, animation tools, but at a very basic level, so very in, kind of like in a very simple and pragmatic way. 
and very much oriented towards uh, what we want to achieve as architects, as designers. So we won't go through a like all the sort of animation tools uh, that animators will work with, but I will try to focus very much these exercises more towards a um, um, either form finding or kind of representational uh, tools, like in this case, like learning how to do turntables like this and to render in no time. Um, and then a bit of the introduction on and physics as well, um, uh, which in Maya is super powerful. And, uh, and, and once again, um, getting to having a real, uh, a basic understanding of real time render with, uh, with Arnold. So, yeah, I think that's it. I will go, um, I wouldn't go further with this short presentation, but then I, I, I would jump into my uh, and just start to show you guys a bit of the software and the interface and and trying to give it like a little example of my workflow and like like I, I would expect you guys to go over it before we start and and I think um, I think that will be sufficient uh, since we're starting from scratch basically. Okay, so um, let's open Maya, and this is probably what you guys also see on the screen. Your screen should be kind of the same as I have it. Maybe you don't have the outliner on. So for those of you guys who are familiar with other modeling software like Rhino, for instance, um, you, you can kind of recall this type of layout and organization for your scene where you have the um, four windows split screen. And you see that we have top, front, side, perspective. These are all our cameras that we can change. Um, and then uh, all around this, you see a bunch of uh, commands and tools and menus that can be a little bit overwhelming at first. But I think once we learn how to navigate in Maya and how to get the specific commands that we want to build our own workflow, I think that then it's kind of, it's, it's not that crazy and, and actually then it will kind of stimulate your curiosity in going and explore a bit more on other tools as well. Um, uh, Maya, for those of you all who are completely new to the software or never heard of it, so Maya, Autodesk Maya, is a software that was never really thought for architecture, actually. It's true that it's used a lot for organic modeling, but it's a software that always been associated and mainly used in the um, cinematographic industry, so the movie industry, or um, the animation industry, character animation, um, video games as well. So um, it's been brought into the architect into the architectural um, department only um, at the beginning by certain academic environments in certain academic environments, and then it was borrowed by also some practices that started to use it. Um, and also to kind of deploy it in their own workflow to build architecture. And I found this very interesting. One of the, those offices is actually the one I'm working um, at the moment. And I find it quite interesting and challenging sometimes, but, but it's also incredible the, poten the, the, the potential of this software in terms of uh, organic modeling and parametric modeling as well. So, okay, I, would, I won't talk too much about this, but you will see that this immediately reflects in the way the software is organized. So I also want you guys to get an understanding of why uh, it's like this. So uh, if you, for instance, look at the top bar here, we have a series of menus that are quite, um, well, Quite, you know, it's quite intuitive to understand what it, what is in there. You have the file menu, edit menu, create menu. These are all menus that might actually be shared by other Autodesk software. So you can kind of find yourself familiar with them. Uh, for instance, you might uh, rightly guess that under file, you have a series of commands that are related to how to uh, open new files or save a new scene or create your own project folder uh, and so on. And then you have edit and, and where you can find also undo and redo and, and then a, more, a series of more um, specific uh, drop down menus, uh, for instance, curves, surfaces, but still kind of understanding 
um, what they do. So if you're looking for doing some kind of transformations to curves, you might rightly guess that you have to come here under curves and then find the proper tool that you need. Um, then going moving down to uh, under under this part, you find these other very long bars with a series of a, a horizontal organized uh, um, kind of like panels with tools tabs, and these are all many of them are kind of all shortcuts of um, tools that you might actually find in the in the upper bar as well. For instance, here you have a a new file, save, undo, redo, and so on. You have selection filter, uh, you have um, mode, um, you have snaps, and so on. We will go through those as we work during the webinar into our exercises. But I want you guys now to focus on this little drop down menu that you have on the left that says modeling now. Um, so as a proof of what I was saying before, if you click on it here, you can see when I was kind of talking about like these different departments and um, the reason at the beginning Maya was built for, you have rigging, animation, effects, rendering. We will be touching some of them during our webinar because I kind of like to build a, to build a sort of hybrid workflow and borrow tools from, from other departments as well. but. What is important here is the fact that you will see that if I change and say, for instance, I want to check animation and I click on it, what actually changed is, is um, this top bar uh, menus here that, that change it accordingly to the department I chose. So if I set it back to modeling, I get my, back my mesh tool, mesh display, curves, and so on. Animation will be different. Uh, rendering will be different again. So this is quite important and it gives you a sort of like understanding of um, how big Maya is and uh, how huge in terms of uh, uh, quantity of tools and then different tools actually uh, that you don't really need to know all of them um, to build your own workflow, uh, luckily. <laughs> um, but it also leaves a lot of room for exploration and it's probably what I like the most about this software as well. Uh, so if you look at the top right instead you have another drop down menu but this time um, okay once again it can be associated with different departments but this time it won't change the the tools that you have access to but it will change the, the workspace so it will change the user interface layout. For instance if I come here and check modeling expert you will see that my scene um my canvas got maximized and 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 all the toolbars that i had on the left and right and also here on the top or the shelves disappeared so this is just to mention you about the fact that, that maya is highly customizable and you also have a series of presets and then of course you can customize them as well yourself we'll stick to uh to, to modeling standard. Yeah, we'll probably stick to modeling standard or Maya Classic. Um, I think this is what we want to work with. Uh, but, but I think it's worth to mention, you can also quickly change it from here. And then in a similar way, you have the possibility to change the arrangement or of just of your views of your cameras here by changing the layout here. So you can maximize one view or having this sort of split view organization. And then you can bring up the famous outliner in Maya, which is a, a, this sort of, it's kind of like a, um, a list of uh, whatever is in your scene at the moment, even things that you don't see, for instance, the default light set or all the cameras that you have in here. Um, so let me go back to this, our four split screen. So moving downwards from, from the top, now we find this series of horizontal um, toolbars. These are called the Maya shelves. So these are all very important. Once again, uh, they are organized and thematized by uh, and being named accordingly. So you have poly modeling, sculpting, rigging, blah, 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 so on. And you also have uh, some of them that says like, this is custom and then it has on my initials. Um, uh, this is my customized shelf where I keep my scripts and, um, and buttons and commands that I use very often. I'll show you guys how to make your own as well, how to write a, 
like to to copy a script in it and organize it as a proper button and just to keep it to give it a hand um and um and yeah and once again uh i would say this is also something that is subject to change as you move and change your layout as well uh but then let's move down again and we finally see our um our scene um how do you enter i want for instance i want to maximize one of this view one way you can do it without going here and checking this you can just simply place uh press spacebar and um and, and also i show you before when this view maximize under the modeling expert uh, where we actually lost all our tools around um there is a there is also this shortcut that we will talk more about it but if you instead of just pressing once spacebar you keep it pressed you actually access the maya hotbox which is this is sort of like a condensed version of all the menus that you find all around you so um i know like people working in modeling expert mode that you, they just use this sort of maya hotbox and then they uh, basically move in here and uh, switch the perspective, but also they assess like all the um, commands from here, right? Okay. So let's just go back and let's stick to our modeling standard. So what I just did, I created a cube. Let's see how we do that. But one thing that you notice immediately is as I create something, it gets dropped in the scene and it also appears in the outliner. That's why it's so important to have the outliner on because it will tell me exactly what is in the scene. And this is also a fast way to select the object, right? So if I have nothing selected, I can either come here, select my object like this, or drag my selection, or I can actually select it from here. So in very complex scene, this is really useful. Um, at the same time, as soon as I select this object, I see here on the right, get this back to okay here on the right you see that you start to get uh, the all the information about the objects and specifically if you have attribute editor and channel box uh, on these are the two charts where you, we get all the information about a specific object that we um there we dropped in the scene let's go back now and delete this so how do we create something and drop it in the scene? There are several ways. Um, as I mentioned before, this course will be focusing on um, mesh modeling, right? So we won't work much with nerves, but we will mainly work with poly modeling. And if I go here in the shelf where I have poly modeling and I can select one of these primitives or I can come here into create. And let me just do one quick check. Okay, and if I either come here and do create polygons and select, say, a cube, or I come here and you see there is exactly the same icon, and I check my cube and I click on it, a cube gets dropped into the scene. But this is just um, a cube, a default cube one by one dropped into the origin that, by the way, is highlighted by the grid. So we're in the, in the center of the grid, we got uh, our origin. Um, but what if I want to build my own primitive? I can do that by going up here to create and then polygon primitives and I want to go all the way down and check interactive creation. So now if I select my cube, I can start to drag. You see that Maya is also telling me uh, what I'm supposed to do. So drag the base first. So keep dragging with the left click mouse. And then when I drop, it says drag up to set height. So I'm basically extruding my box. So I get something like this. And how do I uh, actually navigate the scene? Um, in Maya's kind of, it's a bit counterintuitive at first how to navigate the scene, but I think I can tell you that once you start to uh, work with it uh, more and more often, you kind of get used to this way of, um, of navigating. Um, so if I use my middle mouse, so the wheel, and I just scroll it, I kind of zoom in and zoom out. So this is quite intuitive. But then if I press Alt and middle mouse button and I keep it pressed, that's the way to pan in Maya. 
okay I can press alt and right click and I'm doing this sort of dolly camera movement but this time it's a smoother version of it okay with no discrete interval and then finally with alt left mouse click I rotate around the object how do I make sure if my object disappears, I can't find it anymore? There is a quick way to focus on my object is by pressing F. So you select it and then you press F. And this helps both to focus back on your scene, on, uh, on the object, and also to, um, to uh, reset the camera target to the object. So you see that now I'm um, navigating according to uh, giving the priority to the visibility of my object. Okay, cool. And then there are operations that I can do to this object, but um, before moving into the two, three main operations, I want to show you that, as I mentioned before, as I drop my object into the scene, I both started to see it highlighted in here in the outliner, but also you see that my uh, windows here, both the attribute editor and the channel box, got populated with information. So if I select nothing, these are empty. But as soon as I select my object, they get populated with information. And especially if I'm in the channel box, I can see that these are the transformations that have been applied to my object. And if I go down here into the inputs, here I have the main parameters that are describing my object at the moment. This object is described by the a width, a height, and a depth. And of course, I can change them either by coming here and type um, number, or I can select one of them and middle mouse drag to move it as a slider, or even more than that with shift right click. And I can do, I can kind of, I'm kind of like scaling it, right? Um, and then we see other details, and here we see subdivisions with height and depth. And this is a, a hint, one first hint of the fact they were working with mesh, because we see these subdivision levels, right? So we see subdivision with, at the moment we only have one subdivision. Uh, this is the first hint of the fact that we're working with mesh. Another hint is right here, this little icon in the, in the outliner. This is the, um, the icon that is assigned to, to mesh. So it makes us understand that this is actually a mesh. Another thing is if I actually press three on my keyboard, I get what is called the um, smooth mesh preview. So this is sort of the smooth version. And again, this is just a preview. This is a smooth version of this, which is the actual geometry, right? So if I press one, I go back to the actual geometry three and I get the smooth version. If I press two, I will get an in-between where I have the actual geometry that is wireframed out and then I get a flat shade on the um, on the object itself. Then a couple of things about visualization modes. Um, this bar that we haven't talked about yet in here, this is specific to um, to each to each view. So if again I press spacebar, I hover on another, uh, say another camera like side, and I press spacebar and I come here, I can enter wireframe mode, for instance, uh, either by using these little icons here or um, with the keyboard shortcuts. So if I select wireframe mode, I will enter my wireframe mode here. But as I go back to spacebar again and look at the other screens, that actually all the other cameras um, kept their own their own visualization mode, as you can see. Uh, same way, I can come here and say I don't want to see the grid here on the top view. I uncheck the grid, and this disappears only here and not in the others. Right. Uh, I think this was important important to mention. And then one last thing before we wrap it up, and then of course we will have more time to go. Uh, through this thoroughly. Um, we are actually in object mode and the three main operations that we can do in object mode without touching the formers or anything like that yet, but we will see that of course, is moving, scaling, and rotating. How do you do that? Well, 
I will advise you guys to always memorize the shortcuts and use them. Um, you have the you have the commands here, so this is quite intuitively. You can check this for move, this for rotate, and this for scale, and you see that your gamble changes. But I would just um, ask you guys to memorize the shortcuts before starting. If you do W, this is for move, and you can move on axis, or you can move 2D, or you can move 3D, getting the, the center of the, the gamble, right? Z to go back, uh, or control Z, it's up to you. Um, and then if you press E, you are rotating. And once again, you can do it accordingly to, to, the, to the axis. And if you press R, then now you're scaling. And you see that the parameters are changing here. These are the transformations that we are applying to our object. Okay. So, um, one last notion that I, I think is very important. Um, actually, the last two notions before we wrap it up. First thing is that we've been touching on the channel box here, but if you click on here, you have the attribute edit. And this, I want to, you guys to think about this as a sort of, uh, this is actually the history of our object, of whatever we have selected in the scene. We will get track of the history of what happened to the object and kind of trace back all the steps and operation we applied to it by just clicking on these, these charts here. So for instance, here we see that if we click on Polycube, which is the description of our object, we get um, all these details that are those that we also found back in the channel box. And with, with this kind of like in a very intuitive way, moving the sliders, we can already change the geometry. Okay, and then if, um, say, we actually had to uh, manipulate this object, but we want to manipulate the components of this object. How do we do that? Well, exactly, you need to know that Maya, uh, especially when working with Mesh, there is this sort of, I like to think about it as a, like a multiple level, kind of like a hierarchy of working with an object. So one, the first level is kind of the object mode. So it's where we are at the moment. We are in the object mode, so whatever, um, whatever operations we are doing, that only applies to the entire object, right? If I rotate it, scale it, and so on. Uh, but if I right-click with the object selected, I enter this kind of like drag menu where I can select the next level. So if I want to get to the vertex level or edge level or face level, these are the, the main three for mesh. Um, I can just drop and say, for instance, face here, and I can select my face. And whatever I do here, see if I start to move, rotate, and so on, will only apply to the face. So in a similar way, and I can frame on the face as well. So in a similar way, whatever operation I used to do before on the component level now is applying to the, um, sorry, on the object level now is applying to the component level. So if I take this face and I say, oh, I want to rotate it like this, then that only happened to the face. Okay. If I go back, right click and go back to the object level now, and I want to make some changes here, though I need to know that it might be a bit difficult because I already operated at the component level. So I went one level under and it's difficult to go back and have changing that successfully, you see, apply to the object. So, how do you further manipulate this mesh? Well, you get to what I call the third level. So first level object mode, second level component mode, and third level is if I enter the component mode, so let's go into edges and with shift right click this time, here I enter the um, component level modification um, toolbar. So all these modifiers that you see here all these tools are specific, specifically related to the component that you chose. In this case, we're working with edges, so all these tools relate to edges. So say now, you don't need, really need to follow me anymore, but I want to uh, insert edge loop tool, this, and then I will keep doing this, and keep doing this, and get something, something like that. 
So if I now press 3, you see, oh, actually, let me delete a couple of faces. You will see that I don't have that sort of um, 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 stretched sphere anymore, but I have a more complex object that I can farther play with. Oops, I deleted one face. Definitely don't want to delete. So I get a more complex um, object that, by the way, is responding real time to uh, to the way I modify the topology. See, um, okay. Then once again, don't like like you can follow me in this if you're already familiar with Maya, but it's fine. I'm just just randomly playing you to show you playing with the object to show you like how fast you can get to interesting shapes. And with very, very few manipulations, very few, knowing very few tools, actually. And then it's a lot of also working in between, working with the, and then back and forth, of course, like working between the component mode and the object mode, uh, and so on. And we will, I mean, we will all familiarize with this during the webinar. And I actually prepared it here. I think here there was a something yeah hidden. Like this was kind of a very quick sketch to show you guys how to start from a very simple um, primitive and then start to build on more complexity and get to very interesting shapes like this, for instance, uh, with almost no efforts, right? With very simple operations and also. So and already building up this sort of complexity that, by the way, is is control. And I will teach you during the webinar how to control this complexity and also how to um, kind of try to merge these fields, as I said before, like like bringing in some animation tools as well, and then and, and trying to uh, specifically to get control over it because it's like what I tend to do in my workflow is both to pair. Uh, a more practical approach, as I said before, that is perhaps um, more similar to what you would do in an office, working with organic shapes, of course, and so more controlled geometry, and I will also mix it up with still control um, parameters, but something that is brought more from my, um, my own research as an academic, for instance, where I have the possibility to speculate a bit, a bit more. Um, and I think this is kind of like the very powerful way to work with Maya and polygonal modeling. So I can't wait to um, have you all guys uh, joining the webinar. And um, I hope you kind of enjoyed this very first quick, quick introduction. Um, but of course, there is much more to come uh, and there will be a lot to cover. So once again, I... Um, I think I recommend this webinar to all of you, both those with no previous um, experience with Maya, although I would suggest you guys perhaps to get a bit of, uh, since you have plenty of time, I think this, this webinar will be on the 17th of June. So you will have plenty of time to familiarize yourself with the at least with the navigation of, in the software. But then at the same time, I will cover all the basics uh, since the beginning, and then we will also move to more a advanced modeling and you know you saw some of the screenshots from before from the presentation so this is kind of what we are gonna uh, build together uh, can't wait to have you all guys there and um, thank you thank you for watching